Hello guys, when talking about database schema in Laravel, we often mean migrations, but to visually see the database schema, especially for bigger projects, it's really beneficial to use visual creation and schema drawing tools. So in this video, my colleague Modestas will show you three tools, DrawDB, DB Diagram, and run SQL and what do they actually do including how to use AI to make all the process faster. So let's begin. Hello guys, how many times have you opened migrations folder and were overwhelmed with a huge list of migrations and the idea of trying to figure out how the tables look and what is where or even stared at a blank migration thinking how do I design this database? Today, I want to showcase you a few tools that can help you get a visual overview of your database faster while writing little to no code and even running it before you have any migrations or models created. The first tool we want to show you is the drawdb.app. It's a completely visual tool, which means you don't have to write any code, any specific syntax, nothing. You just create the tables and get a big graph overview. In this graph, we can even zoom in on a specific table and get information about each of its columns, even for the relationships. We can see how they're connected and where the connection goes. But let's take a step back and see how we can use such a tool. Go into File, create a new diagram, select Blank and click Create. This will open a new window with a database type selection. In our case, we will select MySQL and hit Confirm. At this point, we have no database tables, but we can quickly create one by clicking an Add Table button, opening the table and entering the name Users. That's it, we have a scaffold of our table. Of course, this is not enough, so we need to add additional field. We want to have name, which is a varchar, and we want to have email, again, varchar type. Next, we have the option to create another table. So let's create a table called posts and add a field called user ID, which is going to be an integer. Then we can go into the three dots and select unsigned. Then we can go and create a title which is a bar chart and content, which is going to be a simple text field. Now that we have those two tables, we can see that we should have a connection. After all, our posts have a user ID. So let's simply take the user ID and drag it to the user's ID. That's it. It's immediately connected. We can see that the relationship is there and we can even see the relationship type. From there, we can go and check the settings that we have. We can click relationships, click on the relationship and see that we have a primary users table and foreign table posts. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. We can define one-to-many and many-to-one. Then we have the unupdate or undelete actions. We can restrict, cascade, set null or set default. This tool can also help you plan new features. So let's say we have a simple users and post system. Now we want to have comments. We can simply just add another table name it comments, add a field for our user ID, which is again an integer. Don't forget to mark it unsigned. Then add in a post ID. And last, we want to have the content of our comment. And that's it. Again, we can take the user ID, draw it to the user ID, and post ID, draw it to the post ID. Now it becomes a bit more complicated, but we can rearrange the view and have a direct connection. For our users, it's going to the user's ID, and for our post, it's going to the post ID. And we know that our example is pretty simple, but this gives you a good idea of the features that you can expect. This tool allows you to quickly overview all the tables that you have, all the columns inside of those tables, and the relationships between them. So in this case, before even writing any migrations, we can plan the system ahead and have a visual diagram. This diagram can be exported into an SQL or into various other types for future use. It's great to have this on hand because a new member joining a team can have a huge headache and actually 
get lost in your migration files, but this helps them to get information at a glance. And if you have this for all of your system tables, they can quickly navigate between the relationships of the tables and find the information they need. Tool number two is DB Diagram IO. This tool takes the visual aspect that we had, but instead of clicking a bunch of buttons, we can write a DBML structure that will define our tables. We currently have the users and the posts, but let's say we want to add the comments. For this, we can simply add a table comments, set its ID to be primary key and increment, then create a user ID field with begin and reference it that it's connected to the user's ID. Once you have done this, you should have seen this comments appear. Now we can see that there's connecting arrows and in this tool, they're even highlighted. So as soon as you hover on a table, it's going to highlight each of the connections it has. With this tool, we can have a great benefit over DrawDB. This file can be saved in our repository and we can even overview all the updates that happen to our database. So for example, if we add a content text field, push this to our Git repository, this will be shown in our Git history. That means that each of the changes we did were tracked in our Git history and we can overview all the changes that happened to a single file using Git blame. Another benefit of this tool is that it's not depending on the MySQL, Postgres or SQLite. This is just a representation of your database. It's not really tied to anything. So this knowledge and the tool itself can be reused for any of the database engines that we have. Third tool that we want to show you is runsql.com. This tool takes the DBML syntax that we had previously and transforms it into a fake set of tables. The set of tables is just like an Excel sheet and they even recommend you to paste from a CSV file to fill the table with information. Once we have defined our table structure, the data it contains, then we can go into the third window and write an SQL query. In this case, we want to replicate the post with user comments get and see what happens. We have pasted the query to collect from posts, have the user name as an author name. We also count comments as comment count. Then we select everything from the posts, while left joining users and left joining comments. This seems like a pretty complex query, but that's the beauty of this tool. It actually allows you to run, as you can see here, a complex query and give you information about it. It's going to take the data that you have defined, run the query on it and act as a MySQL client. But of course, it can also act like Postgres or SQL Server. With this, we can test our database variability, aka how good the queries run without even creating anything in our actual database. This saves us time by not creating the migrations, models, definition of relationships and stuff like that. It's just a way to test the query that you want to have in your system before you actually build the system. And of course, you might say that, hey, I can do this using any SQL client. Just go into the database and fill everything. And you're right. But this is the beauty of it that you don't even have to open an SQL client. You can write a definition of your table and that's it. It saves a bunch of time and can be used in a very special way. So let's look at that special way now. And that special way is AI usage. We all know that we can use AIs to generate projects, descriptions, task lists, or anything else. But we can also use AI to generate a simple overview for DBML syntax. So let's do that. I will paste a simple prompt here. In this prompt, I want to create a blog application with a few requirements, user authentication and profiles, posts with categories and tags, many to many, comment system, media uploads, link to posts, and self-friendly URLs. We ask the AI to generate the DBML format with Laravel naming conventions, proper indexes, and foreign key constraints. So let's run it. We can see that it's generating a bunch of tables with the DBML syntax, including indexes, nodes, comments, and even relations. The generation of DBML has finished and we have quite a huge file. So let's copy everything and go back into our tool and try to paste. We can see that there's a bit of an error that happens with AI. We can just remove the relationship definitions and we should see it update. Now let's minimize the view and try to move a few tables around to get a better overview. Once we move the tables around, we can see that there's all the connections defined. Each of our table has all the fields. We even have enums and other information, including defaults. And then we can follow the relationship. So let's say we want to check, hey, user ID is set and we are tied to the user, but to who the user belongs. We have three outgoing connections. So let's click on one 
and try to follow it until we find post views. This is great. We can use AI to generate new database structures and brainstorm ideas. And if there's something we don't like, we can go in, find the table we don't like, and just simply change the definition. Next, we can take the whole working diagram, go into example run, paste it, and we should see a bunch of tables created. Each of these tables are empty, but you can go inside of the tables and create the content inside of it. From there, you will be able to run the SQL queries that you want to have in your system and see, does this work for you? From there, you might think, okay, I have the DBML structure, I have tested the queries, it works. So how do I transform each of my DBML tables into an actual Laravel migration? Let's take a look. The migration, we have our DBML for posts. Yes, it's a simplified version, but just for demonstrational purposes, in which we have ID, user ID, title, and slug. And from here, you can create the migrations themselves, or there's another use case, you can ask AI to do that. In this case, I'm using cursor, so I would expect it to take the specifications above and add correct suggestions for my fields. And it did. We have created the user ID, we have the title and the slug, and that's it. That's how you can use three different tools to actually improve your database design workflows. And that's it. These tools should help you design better databases and do it faster, especially since you can combine different AIs to generate a rough idea, take it and transform it into a diagram, then preview all the connections between the tables, and finally transform it into a migration file. This will prevent you from having to deal with a bunch of edits to your migrations, and especially the annoying cases where you think that you had the correct schema, but you ran an SQL query and it didn't work. So in the end, you're going to produce a better system and actually have a faster output, which means that you can do more. Do more experimentation, create more systems, who knows? But as a Laravel developer, you should know that the biggest bottleneck often is the database. Remember, we have all the n plus one queries and these tools help you remove that bottleneck completely. Well, not completely, but as close as possible. Let me know in the comments below if you guys used any tool that works like this, or do you have other tools that you found useful while working with databases and their structures?